Now on Carlton, this is The Real Brass Off. Under your skin, I just love it. it it's, it's like it's like a drug. Desford is a very unusual band. I couldn't believe the dedication of that band, you know, and, and that's how it is with these players. They don't do it for a living. They're, they're mostly amateurs, you know, but it's very important to them. We've got players come from London, Wales, uh, Bristol. The crackers. <laughs> They're on the twist. <laughs> I come from Nottingham. I live 650 miles away, so um, doesn't. You know, I don't get the chance to come that often. I really feel proud to be amongst uh, super players like this. Got a really good setup. Super band room, as you can see here. Got our own bar. <laughs> Keep coming back because it's a drug and it just gets to you and you need you need your fix of banding. <laughs> just to confuse you, there are actually two different bands who are both based at the Brass House in Colville, Leicestershire. The A band, with many professional players, is known as Desford Colliery Band. Then there's the B band, mostly local amateur players, the Snibston and Desford Colliery Band. This week we follow the newly reformed Snibston band to their first competition in Blackpool. They'll need to beat nine other bands in their section to win the coveted British Coal Trophy. The Desford band are playing at a high profile event at the Victorian Albert Museum in central London. Snipston's conductor is Sid Stewart. It's the final week of rehearsals for their contest debut in Blackpool. Dennis! Dennis! Come on, then! There are still a few problems to iron out. How are you? This is Dennis, everybody. I'm hitting it on the rim like that. Yeah, hit down on it. No, no, on the rim, but straight through it. Don't ever say it's a good idea to do a run through again. When I think it's finished, it's time to finish, we finish. Because that was absolutely abysmal. Far away from the brass house, Sid relaxes with a round of golf. <laughs> yes. It's changed since I was playing. When we play for Desford, you join Desford for the honour of playing for the band. You know, you just worked so hard to, for the band to win. Uh, and that was it. No money, nothing. These days, all the top bands are paying money at the players and things like that. So it's becoming semi-professional. So I, I, I just can see the bottom falling out of the market if they lose all their sponsorships. And every time this band loses its sponsorships, there's like a big crisis. Because all the players don't want to stop and that. I don't think there's no loyalty. A bit like football, I suppose. Um, so I see the future in band and in bands like Rapby, Snipson and Desford, local bands around here, there's some good bands around here, you know, little bands that are well organised and that, and teaching kids, it's got to be teaching kids, that's where the future is. <laughs>
Okay, you try from there. And you're just going to roll them fingers. The business side of banding may have changed, but community and family are as important to the Snibston way of life today as they were when the band started. For amateur musicians like Stuart Bryan, despite their musical passion and talent, they wouldn't give up their day job. I like to strike the balance with my family life, where we can bring up a family and, and both have our own hobbies and, and, and do banding at a level that's comfortable for myself. I just like to keep mine the way it is. Down in London, David Smith, leader of Desford Band, takes some of the lads for a rehearsal in a rather unusual place. I thought we'd rehearse in a different venue today. Their quick rehearsal high above London over, David hurries the band on to the next venue, the V&A Museum, a short cab ride away. We've got to do four, four sets today, four sets of 40 minutes, so it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a hard day's work anyway. I went to Desford in the juniors and, and went to the B band and then to the A band, to the Desford Colliery band, and then, then people go away to music college or there's two sets of people. There's, there's the there's people that went to music college and became either teachers or professional musicians, and then the, there are, um, are people who who do it as a hobby. And but the people that do it as a hobby are often a lot better than the people that do it for a living, aren't they? <laughs> um, but they have a different set of stresses than we have. When we do all get together, we have a lot of fun and we get some good music out of it. And it's all friends yeah. together. The reason why I do why I, why I do Desford is A is because it's something that I've done all my life. And my family my family are in heavily involved in the band. And more than anything it's a way to go home and see my mum and dad and my grandma and old friends that, that I went to school with. So whenever I'm up, up in Leicester I try and see as many people as possible. David and Duncan have arrived at the V&A, where they're engaged to play. It's a celebration of the reopening of the British galleries right. and the first day of free admission for the public to the museum. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the Brass House in Colville... Well, we've just loaded up the van and we're on our way to Blackpool to play at the contest tomorrow for the Mine Workers Championships. I knew there was some redundancies coming up in the army, so I went to see the boss when I got back, asked me if he'd make me redundant. And he said yes, and I left on the 3rd of January 1983, discharged. I wanted to move on. So I came up and joined the desk band, then found a job after. Oh, look here, look, Caterpillar. I used to drive them and build them paint them and put the stickers on those.
the Desford 10 are putting the finishing touches to their performance of Michael Nyman's new fanfare called Free For All. Everyone's a bit on edge, as it's rumoured that the famous composer himself is going to conduct. OK, let's just do rehearsal now, so that we can see if you can play off that. I think Michael Nyman's conducting, and I don't know which way would be best to stand um, on those steps. I think in a line would be better, actually. Join us in a moment to see how David and co play in front of Michael Nyman and how Snipston do first time out at a contest. It's the morning of the contest in Blackpool. The band sit down to a hearty breakfast, steeling themselves for the challenge ahead. There's one final rehearsal at the hotel before leaving for the Winter Gardens, where the competition is to be held. Four bar, please change your key with a pickup. Three, four. <laughs> short semi quavers on the short side, run the long side. The banding, in whatever spectrum, whether it's within the Coalfield community or not, banding is a way of life. They eat, sleep, and drink music and banding. This is the annual uh, Manor's National Brass Band Contest held here in these illustrious surroundings at the Winter Gardens of Blackpool. We've been for many, 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 many years now. There are 56 bands competing today. We had an original entry list of about 84, but for one reason or another, the bands have to pull out. They represent the whole of the coal field, the former coal field of Great Britain. They come from Scotland, they come from South Wales, and everywhere in between. Snipston, like all the other bands competing in Blackpool, are steeped in the rich tradition of brass banding in the coalfield communities. From the 1980s, with the decline of the mining industry, membership of the bands changed enormously. Whilst few of today's band members cut coal, many players still have fathers and grandfathers who were miners. If this isn't heritage of the coal field, then I don't know what is. This heritage is here today, it's been here a long time, and it will be here into the future that we can sustain them with money. Sid anxiously tries to gauge the competition. <laughs> whilst the others wait backstage, where the atmosphere is a mixture of excitement and yeah, that's nerves. That, that, that's the, that's the ultimate, isn't it? Oh. So, Steve North, Stuart's mate, has just joined the band. Will he do the business on stage today? A little bit nervous, but quite excited. Once you get on the stage, yeah, the, uh, the adrenaline starts to go then, you know, and you sort of tighten up and away you go. A little bit nervous, but all being well. Touch wood, it should do. It should be fine. The time has come for the age-old signing-in ritual. This is where we check all the bands and make sure that they're who they say they are. And they've all got this, they've all got the registration card, the band registration card. You see this, look, in all the competitions that they go in, they have to all be signed and monitored and they have to check the photographs and make sure that they haven't put the little sister in or, or I've got David Beckham playing for them. That's what it's about, really. 